Can I wear my mittens today? <laughs> I now call this no. No. Nope. Meeting of the Davenport Community School Board of Directors to order. Um, it would have um, to be like a firstly, a whoever is uh, participating five. online, if you could please mute. We're getting a lot of background noise in here. Yeah. Otherwise, they can even just write some notes and email them to me. If that's easier for them. Director Snyder, would you please read the board priorities? <laughs> The priorities are the Davenport School Board establishes the following priorities to ensure the academic success of all students. Provide leadership and direction to improve the overall learning environment in our classrooms, school, and districts, in, or district, including the health, safety, security, and happiness of students and staff. To direct and support actions, programs, and activities which reduce the impacts of poverty on our students, their families, and our community. Director Potts, would you please read the mission and vision statements? I will. Mission statement, to enhance each student's abilities by providing a quality education enriched by our diverse community. Our vision statement is to educate education that challenges conventional thinking, prepares all students to compete in a global society, and inspires our students, parents, staff, and community to answer the question, what if? Thank you both. Uh, next up, we have a presentation from the Have Life Foundation, and Kim Guy, the president of the foundation, is here, so I will turn it over to you. Thank you. Click this. I'm pretty loud without that, so I'll try not to be so um, loud. First of all, I wanted to uh, take the opportunity to thank you for allowing us to come for give a brief orga uh, organizational overview of the Have Life Foundation. For um, those board members that um, might not be familiar, oops, I'm gonna slide this down here, sorry. For those of you who might not be familiar with the Have Life um, Foundation, we were established in 2007 in memory of Hunter Aaron Vondren, who passed away at the age of 13 in 2004. Um, Hunter, Va Hunter Aaron Vondren was a actual student at Sudlow at the time. He was an extraordinary young man. Um, his family decided the best way to uh, keep his memory of, alive was to establish the foundation as um, to help others ages 10 to 15 as a kind of a service vehicle to give them the opportunities that Hunter did have. Um, Hunter was a very unique and extraordinary individual. He was very involved in athletics and the arts and music and uh, his family felt that um, they wanted to keep his memory alive by helping those who might not have those opportunities. The mission of Have Life, um, as we call it, is to prevent lost potential. And that means um, through the support of participation in music, art, and sports, to create opportunities for youth to experience those that they might not otherwise have the opportunity or the means to do so. Um, and uh, we've been pretty fortunate uh, to date, I keep, sorry, I keep going a little bit too fast here with my little finger. Um, our foundation since 2007 has been able to raise in excess of $1.2 million. And we have been able to distribute those dollars through our grant partners, um, we, which in turn means we have impacted over 12,000 uh, lives of youth within the Quad City area. And additionally, um, about five years ago, we expanded to the Dubuque and Johnson counties in Iowa. All this has been made possible through an incredible group of volunteers as well as our donors um, within the Quad City area and subs 10 to 15. Um, with Davenport being a larger school district, Davenport generally focuses on that middle school age, um, finding opportunities to give youth that intervening <coughs> moment that might change uh, their life and help them pursue a passion. Um, but how, how Davenport does this is they have a, a small group of people within the um, district that teachers, coaches, and counselors fill out a nomination form for youth 
middle school age that might have the opportunity to maybe take private music lessons, go to a camp, um, art lessons, something to ignite that spark within them and give them the opportunity that they might not have had before, before um, have life intervened. Um, and, and just to mention, we're really not the heavy lifters. It's, it's really um, the teachers, your teachers, coaches, and counselors within your district and many other people within youth organizations. They're the ones that are going out and taking their time and really um, finding the opportunities or engaging with the youth and trying to have us make that connection. One thing that we, um, this was really great. Um, last year, we got an unsolicited thank you from a student, and I know it might be a little bit difficult to read, but um, it it was something that um, with they they contacted us, and um, as you can read, if you, if you can read it, I'm sorry, it's a little bit small, but it was it was very moving, and um, in this case, how it changed that student's life and the path that they want to follow. And I really just want to try to highlight the last couple sentences. Um, it talks about a little bit of their history, how they were able to um, get the grant over um, three years being in middle school with the orchestra. They went to a music camp and, and they talk at the very end and they say they really enjoy music. It's really their life. It's one of the only things that has kept me sane in this crazy world we live in today. I have a lot of struggles in my personal life, but music allows me to escape to another realm for just one moment through music I can breathe and it says because of this it's all because of you and you really will know, not know how much of a difference it makes and it really does choke me up and many others because um, the difference that we're able to help um, with the help with um, the teachers coaches and counselors really does mean a lot to these individuals and in turn means a lot to us as a foundation you will see that we have approximately 45 grant recipients or grant par granting partners that we grant funds to and, and they help us engage the youth um, within the Quad Cities community. And we're always looking to grow that number and trying to be an outreach to these different groups and find new groups that might not be aware of us that might have the opportunity to reach other kids that we aren't reaching through um, the various school districts within the Quad Cities and youth organizations. Um, what, just kind of a little bit of an overview, everything's been a little bit different in this last year for all of us and what to continue to expect from Have Life in uh, 2021. Um, Post-COVID territory is going to be uncharted for all of us as well as, as you all know. And we really don't know um, <coughs> the long-term effects that the, the lockdown will have on students how they haven't been able to participate in their activities that really give them that uh, passion and hope. But you know, one thing is definitely for sure, our board, our core volunteers, and our donors are committed to continue to raise funds and find ways that we can help youth going forward this year and in the future when these opportunities open up, that we can continue to um, respectively give them those opportunities. And um, like we all like to say and remember within Have Life, you know, right now you know, the youth is only representative of 25% of our, of our current population, but they are 100% of our future and we want to invest in that future. And we want others within the community to invest in the future, in their future and realize how important they are to us. Um, as I said, we don't do this alone. We have a robust group of our board of directors that's listed here. Um, and not only with them, they, they give us our time, their time, talent, and wisdom, and they help continue to grow our organization and allows us to serve more youth. But as I said, it takes more than just our board, our volunteers, and the community are a huge part of our um, growing success, and um, they help us rate we raise approximately 80% of all the revenues we grant out within our events. And so last year with COVID, we have been we were pretty fortunate. We were able to have our events and, and hopefully here in the next few months, we'll get to start to do that as well. Just wanna take a second and um, try to play this short video um, for you to look at for Have Life if I can. 
get it to launch here. I don't know if on this, if, if it'll launch as well as on your computer. I tested it earlier, sorry. <coughs> Okay. The little play button at the bottom, will that work? The little play forward button at the bottom. I don't know if over there on the side. Will that work? Isn't it play down the left hand corner? Mm -hmm. Pardon me? I can I can show you the I can give you the website. It's a YouTube video. Mm -hmm. yeah, I can show you. While they're trying to get that going, I just wanted to uh, read off the phone number for open forum if anyone wanted to call in for open forum. It is 563-445-5001, ID number 59771133. And also, I just wanted to let everyone know that starting next week there will be an open forum request form on our website that you will be able to fill out and if you get it into the board secretary we can acknowledge you on the call but you'll still have to call in again that number is uh, 563-445-5001 ID number is 59771133 which I believe all that information will be on our website with that form. Perfect time. There we go. General volume. <coughs> well, that interventive moments can come in many ways. The participation in one football camp can take a young soul and help them decide that they want to pursue uh, athletics and opportunities that exist on, on that field of play versus maybe not the other direction. Have Life is to appeal to kids who are 10 or 15 age bracket 
which was the age bracket when Mike and Brenda Vondren's son died in an accident. Hunter was engaged in both of those activities at school. Uh, he was in the, the musical end of school, and he was also uh, an athlete. He also was on a football team. The middle school age is really that crossroad in a youth's life where a lot more opportunities are opening to them, as well as good and bad. So kind of sometimes they get to that crossroad and we're hoping that our involvement might keep them on the right side of the path. We've been at it since 2007. Since then more than one million dollars of grants have been given to more than 10,000 kids or students. With Big Brothers Big Sisters I always say man if we just had this, you know, if we just had this to really you know help a kid find a spark and oftentimes it was either financed by the big themselves or uh, we get an occasional grant or something or maybe a scholarship from an organization. Um, now, um, because of the connection with Have Life, um, it opens all kinds of uh, possibilities uh, for kids. I feel grateful for that because they didn't have to take time out or money out their day to pay for something I wanted to do, but they did. I mean, any organization has uh, a fee that you have to incur to, in order to, to do just the basic things. Um, with Have Life, we can erase that. We can take that part out. They have the potential, and we know they do. We just want to give them the means to pursue that potential, to let them know that they have such a bright future ahead. And I think the Have Life is, is just all part of that. It's all part of that. You're interacting with kids, and you're giving them opportunity. You're giving them a shot. And most of them, you give them a shot, they'll run with it. There are hundreds of, of examples of, you know, where we, uh, you know, we've encouraged uh, a girl, uh, you know, an 11 year old girl to, to uh, go to a volleyball camp uh, through a scholarship from Have Life. And, you know, two years later, she's on an elite travel volleyball team. And now that's a, that's a main motivator for her to stay focused on her academics, to uh, get a lot of the basic expectations uh, in order, because she needs to be the best that she can possibly be to have that opportunity. They remember things in flashbulb bursts, and that's why you, you don't know what the flashbulb fingerprint burst that you're throwing out there is going to stick. And so when you give kids these opportunities and you've got to trust them a little bit, you know, it eventually pays off for them. It just seemed like there was such a small, such a small barrier that we had to find a way to do away with it. And uh, we did. So in closing, I would just um, encourage you all to go to our website, havelife.org, to learn more. It does have a tab on there to um, even find out more information about the other chapters if you happen to know somebody who lives in the Dubuque or Johnson County area as well. And uh, appreciate having the time just to get to share a little bit more of our story with you all. Thank you. Hang on one sec. Do any board members have anything? Nothing? Director Hayes? I don't have a question, but I do have a comment. I think it's an awesome program. I know um, this extracurricular things can be very expensive. I have a grandson that takes violin and piano and in Quad City Junior Symphony, so I know it could add up for those that can't afford it, and I think it's an awesome program and a great honor for um, Hunter in his memory. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming tonight. We really appreciate pres the presentation. It looks like you guys do a lot of great work. And I do appreciate you being very passionate about it and getting choked up. Absolutely. It shows how much you care. Absolutely. Thank you. So, thank you very much. <laughs> Student board reports. Casey, you want to start us off? I would love to. Oh, I gotta figure out how to work this mic all over again. 
Um, I just want to say uh, it's great to be back. I know it's been a while since I've been here in person. I've been filing my reports online for a little bit. So it's great to see everybody's face again. And uh, yeah, <laughs> so um, I think I'll just jump right in. Um, and I want to preface this uh, student board report with um, a lot of this year obviously has been plagued with, um, to avoid a cliche, but um, uncertainty. Um, so a lot of the questions that my peers have had that may have gone unaddressed or have remained foggy, um, I've just sort of included in this student uh, report. Um, so if you can forgive me, um, I've just sort of formatted this as just a few questions. Um, so if you have answers, that would be great. If you want to answer them at the end of this, um, that would be appreciated. Um, I know that, uh, as I'm sure as many uh, online students will be returning um, to the in-person format, um, many of the hybrid students have opted to go um, online, myself included. And um, from just the ballpark figures that I've encountered and heard from um, like teachers and staff, um, 30 to 40 kids from North go online and 30 to 40 return each term thus far. Um, so I'm interested to see how that number changes after um, we have classroom sizes changing and um, in terms of like social distancing, safety measures. Um, so hopefully I can include that number in my next report and student attitudes changing in terms of that. Um, just because right now it's just a little shaky just in terms of nobody knows really what to expect. Not necessarily... Um, uh, a bad thing right now just people don't know what is coming in the future or um, people that have been hybrid thus far going online not knowing what to expect um, and then just sort of segueing into that I think um, in terms of keeping students safe um, I and many other students um, sort of are wondering what the district's uh, current plan is uh, for keeping students safe with this 100% uh, return to learning um, because I think it's a lot easier to just say that we are going to be enforcing social distancing in the schools. But um, I classrooms, especially at North, some of the classrooms, it's really difficult to enforce that, especially if we're keeping like six feet. It's really hard to place students six feet apart in a classroom um, of that size. So, and not only for students, but I think that expect, expectation is becomes increasingly more difficult to um, implement for staff because even if you have um, like a certain number of students and the students are willing um, there's not always seats in the class or there's there's a lot of confounding uh, variables um, and then I think um, going on uh, with the safety uh, contact tracing uh, seeing as to that Scott County Health Department has put a hold on uh, COVID contact tracing um, is the district going to implement a plan to track positive COVID cases as new students return to a fully in-person format? Um, because as it stands now, students must notify their teachers or their nurse individually. Um, and so if students aren't aware of that or if students fail to do that, then there's uncertainty or if students don't sit in their assigned seat one day, then it's like who has, who has contacted who? who uh, was talking to who, and then it can become a mess uh, a little bit more quickly than obviously anybody would like. Um, and then I just want to end this um, section um, with a bit about online learning, because currently, at least as I understand it, um, Davenport teachers have um, a very little control over the structure of online learning courses in Edgenuity. And though teachers can decide what edgenuity assignments to uh, delegate to students in terms of adding or detracting, um, the opportunity for direct teacher to student engagement um, is, and tailored virtual learning is slim to none. And as a student that is going online soon, should I and other online students expect changes to this setup? And if so, when should we expect them? Additionally, in my next student report, um, I want to deliver a little bit more thorough um, analysis of like ingenuity and talk to more students because um, just to make sure that I'm like going through it and getting more um, uh, contact with ingenuity and more uh, more experience with it 
Um, I think that I would really like to see how it compares to a hybrid learning, just being in that situation of going from hybrid to online and seeing how um, those compare. Um, and then moving on um, just to a little bit more uh, different uh, mashup. Um, in terms of sports, uh, as an update, uh, Davenport School celebrated swimmers from Central High School making it to the state swimming competition. Um, and those people were Kyle Hopewell, Austin Siebert, Carter Sullivan, Brody Thomas, Keegan Tolley, and Max Wetland. And then nor the North Wildcats beat Muscatine in boys basketball uh, 41 to 28 with uh, Quincy Wiseman taking 13 points and Jaden Houston taking 10. And that concludes my student report. Oh, I don't have anything oh. set up to say. No, you're okay. There's time for you. Thank you. And I love how you transitioned from a, a journalist into a, 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 a sports commentator. That was just brilliant. I really, I'm smiling under here, Casey. And I, Lily, did you have anything that you wanted to add? Um, I didn't have anything prepared for today at okay. all because this is my first time actually being at one of these meetings. Okay. So I didn't have anything ready. And so if you have something, just so you know, if you have something you'd like to say, the board president's attention, raise your hand and, and he'll call on you. Okay, right. and welcome, Thanks. we're glad you're here. Yeah. And thank you for that wonderful report. Um, I can answer some of your questions. Um, one, we talked about this great length of the committee of the whole. We are not going to be able to appropriately social distance inside of our classrooms. The best thing that we can do is wear our masks and get social distance where we can. Um, <clears throat> the second part, the contact tracing, very difficult. And that does fall on the school district now. I am very proud of our district nurse. And um, she has applied for a grant. And we were able to hire a contact tracer um, use, utilizing those funds. Because the, a lot of the contact tracing happens over the weekend. And so we plan to continue our contact tracing. A lot of that contact tracing will fall on our administrators um, and building staff. But we do continue to contact trace. Um, in terms of our numbers, we received about a third of our survey back. Is that right? I'm looking at Mrs. Guy here. Um, and we had, I would say our numbers stayed pretty steady, but I would say that we had a hand, slightly more comeback face to face. Mrs. Guy, give a thumbs up to that. Yes. So that's, so if that, if we extrapolated that out, but we'll, we'll have better numbers next week. Um, I think the big thing, and, I, and I, I know many of you heard this, and I plan to share it later, but I'll share it again. Um, we will be wearing masks. And I know that with the most recent um, information that came out, it's very important for us to know that that's the number one thing we can do inside of our schools when you're 100 percent face to face. The last thing I will say, Casey, is I'm very proud of our team because you have a choice, you know, and, you, and you're using data to make that choice. And that's an excellent way to operate. You know, and you're asking for that data and you're asking to have these questions answered. Each one of our buildings has a, a, a return to learn plan and the re the, there's going to be a plan shared tonight um, or voted on. It was shared at the community of the whole. It's on our website. There's different things you can look at on there um, to, to help you make your decision. OK, so if you as you continue to have your questions, you move forward. I urge you to ask your principals in your building because they're each. That's one of the great things about Davenport is our buildings have their own culture in them. And so how, how our buildings have to address the individual things. Like we have flat buildings, we have buildings that are six stories tall. And so what do those mitigating strategies look like? It's really hard for us to say, this is what you will do. Because I watched Mr. Flynn at North attack hallway, hallway procedures way different than Mr. Chelf did at, at North. So is that anything? Yeah, central and north. Sorry. Central. Thank you. <laughs> so hopefully that answers your question. Thank you. Thank you, student board members. Um, also, when we go to do discussion and things like that, and I ask for board members' input, feel free to raise your hand, and then I'll call on you. We do look forward to what you guys have to add to this. Um, now I will move on. Are there any board reports? Director Poshton. Last week I spent part of the day with uh, Principal Flynn at Central High School. I would like to uh, thank him for 
uh, spending some time with me on Wednesday. I will be visiting with um, Principal Shelf at uh, um, North High. Director Hayes. I've had a pretty busy couple of weeks. Um, we started off at the SBRC meeting, January 25th, I believe, it, state. or a state, state board meeting, I'm sorry, with um, Superintendent Snackloff and Director Gosa. Very promising meeting. I attended a SRO meeting last week to discuss some of the responsibilities of the SROs in the schools. I was online or on the phone today with the community violence prevention team and um, Gary Thrapp from Above the Baseline was on there talking to with some things that he may be able to do to assist the district. Um, Director or President Gosa and myself, we've had a couple um, president workshops that we've attended over the last month or so. And today I had a Davenport Conference um, board meeting that I'll be attending. I'm not sure how often the meetings are, but I know the next meeting will be on March 1st. Director Beck. Um, so my uh, board report tonight is um, about the uh, some of the legislation that's moving through the Iowa State Legislature, um, and I have brought to the board uh, a resolution uh, in opposition to voucher legislation. Um, if it's okay, I'd like to read it. Okay. Um, and of course, we're not voting on this right now, but I'm reading what I'm proposing. Whereas the Iowa legislature is considering enactment of SF-159, which will one, provide taxpayer funding for vouchers or education savings accounts, two, expand open enrollment leading to school segregation, and three, expand charter schools that can open in a school district without the locally elected school board's consent, and whereas the board of directors of the Davenport Community School District has determined that the Iowa legislature should not, one, enact vouchers, two, promote enrollment po policies that uh, segregate schools and three allow charter schools to operate without the transparency and accountability of public schools and whereas the board of directors of the Davenport Community School District has determined that the Iowa legislature should continue to promote and fully invest in Iowa's public schools more specifically the state of Iowa should use public dollars for public schools the public's investment investment should be used to support public community schools which are open to all students regardless of race, religion, gender, socioeconomic status, and disability, not for a new entitlement program for parents who choose private education. Public funds require public accountability and transparency. Therefore, public schools are overseen by a publicly elected citizen governing board, are required to report academic results to the general public, have an annual public financial audit, and be transparent with all expenditures and decision making. Private, religious, and many charter schools are not held to that same public standard. And whereas taxpayers have a right to know how their funds are being used, but are left in the dark about the use and impact of voucher charter school funds, school choice already exists in Iowa in the form of open enrollment, enrollment in private online institutions, tuition tax credits, and school tuition organization scholarships for families below 400% of the federal poverty level, and whereas the population of a school district should reflect the population of its community and locally elected school boards are best positioned to determine how to maintain diversity in their schools. And whereas the board of directors of the Davenport Community School District believes that all students deserve a quality education, regardless of race, religion, gender, socioeconomic status and disabilities, disability, even those in schools identified as in need of comprehensive support and improvement and public money is intended for that use. Now, therefore, be it resolved by this Davenport Community Schools Board of Education that this board reaffirms its commitment to free, accessible public schools, which are adequately and equitably funded to guarantee a comparable education for all children, and therefore opposes and respectfully requests the Iowa House of Representatives reject SF-159, specifically the Students First scholarships, vouchers, and expansion of charter schools by any entity without the approval of the local school board. 
Be it further resolved that this Davenport Community Schools Board of Education opposes any funding programs, vouchers or otherwise, that have the effect, intended or not, of diverting public tax dollars from public schools to private and or parochial schools or to charter schools that are not under the auspices of locally elected school boards. Thank you. Thank you, Director Beck. Um, if you want to do a board request on that, yep. we can bring it before the board. Um, are there any other board reports? Uh, the only thing I have, uh, Director Hayes already stole a lot of my thunder. We did a couple of board president workshops through the ISB, which I do encourage all board members to go on their website. They do have webinars and all kind, a lot of information in there and a lot of toolkits. Uh, you should have a username and password for the website. Um, and then I also, uh, I know Director Beck, you had submitted a board request on the SRO thing. We are going to be doing a joint meeting with the city of Davenport, I believe on the 22nd. They're actually coming here Good. to us. So, um, and then otherwise, I think we did the Davenport Commission conference meeting today, and then I did the Scott County Commission conference meeting, and now we're here. So, uh, with no other board reports, I will, uh, Move on to communications and open forum. Open forum is a time for members of the community to give input at a board meeting regarding school district issues or concerns. Individuals who want to speak should fill out an open forum request and give it to the board secretary prior to open forum. The board will not act on any issue presented during open forum if it was not published as an agenda item. The Iowa Open Meetings Laws prohibits action on any issue that is not on the agenda. The President will set the amount of time allowed for individuals to speak during open forum. The Board asks that no charges or complaints be made against individual employees of the district or community during open forum. Remarks that reflect negatively on the character or motives of any person will be called out of order. And again, I want to reiterate that at the next, our open forum request forms will be added on our website. So you will be able to get them off of there and fill them out and get them into the board secretary. And uh, they should be available online before our next meeting. And again, the call-in number is 563-445-5001. The ID number is 597-7133. Do we have any open forum requests? Is there anyone on the line wishing to speak for open forum? Bill, can you tap on that door and ask Joe if anyone's called in? Okay. John Keeley, President of Davenport Education Association. All right. Mr. Keeley, you have two minutes. Okay. Good evening, um, Davenport School Board. Um, the topics that we'd like to talk to you tonight are Mr. about Keeley, the teacher's expectations. Can, can yeah. you state your name and address, please, for the record? Sure. Gladly. John Keeley, 3240 Lorton Avenue, Davenport, Iowa. You can hear me, Dan, or not? Yes, sir. You may proceed. Thank you. Um, the points we'd like to bring up to the school board tonight are on the teacher expectations for the virtual inclement weather days. Um, it's been brought to our attention uh, that the Davenport uh, Community School District's administration is presenting some uh, ideas that have had no consultation with uh, us. We understand uh, that this is kind of a chopping block of time, that things had to be done in a hurry. However, there is a, te there is a teacher expectation team that has been set up for pandemic issues. Uh, it's made up of teachers and leaders throughout the district. Uh, the teacher expectation, expectation team was not consulted during the creation of this proposal. 
any policy or administrative director on the teacher expectations for virtual inclement weather days needs to be reevaluated on an annual basis. Uh, and looking over the proposal, there's a lot of ideas that seem to be on kind of a trial and error basis. Virtual inclement weather days may not be a reality in the future. May, excuse me, may now be, let me clarify myself, may now be a reality in the future. This proposal was written in some haste and needs some more eyes and ears by the people who are affected by it in the future. The DEA believes that the teachers should not be held responsible for Internet interruptions, power outages, or other circumstances outside their control, including the unavailability of child care for their own homebound children on an inclement weather day when they are also required to teach virtually. In these circumstances, uh, the Davenport Community School District should grant administrative leave with pay for teachers who find themselves in these circumstances. The requirement for teachers to provide a sub cannot be done as per the proposal because subs do not have access to Google Classroom or other programs that are used within the district. As an alternative, Um, Lessons should uh, may be posted by teachers in circumstances outside of their control. Again, I would like to emphasize it has been, um, I could say as president of the association, a pleasure to be working with the uh, uh, Davenport Community School District administrators for many years. Um, We have a very trusting relationship, and we're asking that when we look at the uh, expectations for virtual inclement weather days, that we would be considered. Thank you very much and appreciate the time. Thank you, Mr. Keeley. Is there anyone else wishing to speak during open forum? Is there anyone else wishing to speak for open forum? Seeing none, I will move on. May I have a motion on the consent agenda? Mr. President. Director Hayes. I move the board accept the consent agenda as written. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Director Beck. Is there any discussion? Uh, Director Potts. Uh, Mr. President, I'd like to ask the superintendent to give an explanation on the status change of Dr. Klipsch. Hold on a second. Do we pull? We have to pull that one out and then talk about it? Or you just, yeah. May. I think we do have to pull it out. Yep. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. You want to make a motion to pull that one out so then we can discuss. I move to pull out the, that recommendation at this time. Don't need a motion requested. You don't need a motion. Oh, you don't need a motion. Just, you're requesting to pull that out? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. That's the only thing? Okay. Anybody have anything else? All right. So to be clear and clarify, what we're voting on is everything on the consent agenda minus what Director Potts had asked to pull out. And then after we vote on this, we'll go back and have that discussion. Good. Are there any questions on that? Uh, Director Hayes. Yes. Director Beck. Yes. Director Potts. Yes. Director Klein Jerome. Yes. Director Snyder. Yes. Director Poston. Yes. And my vote is yes. Motion carries. Now I have to have a motion on that, right? Now I need a motion on uh, Dr. Klipsch's position. Mr. President. Director Beck. I move that we approve the realignment of Dr. Klipsch's position as written. As presented. Is there a second? Second. Second. Two seconds. Is there any discussion? Director Potts. Mr. I'd just like to give the superintendent the opportunity to explain 
the situation. Sure. So when my when my position was vacated due to the realignment, Dr. Klipsch stepped into that role as the interim director of learning supports and his salary was never adjusted for that. His position that he was on as a, was a program director in, in my department, in that same department. So what we've done and what we've had to do across the district is to absorb the roles of other people. And so what we've done is we've taken that role and absorbed it, the one that Dr. Klipsch was in before. So what you're seeing here is the adjustment in salary from a program director to a director because it was never done when he was aligned. So that's the, that's the change. How, how does that conform with our hiring freeze? Excuse me? How, do, how does that fit in with our hiring freeze? So we didn't hire him. We realigned him into a position that had a higher responsibilities. And so that's what, that's what that is. It's a compensation for, for doing more in that position. Okay, I just want to give you a chance to explain it. That's all. No, it, it, thank you, appreciate it. Director Klein, Jerome. Um, it's listed as interim, but when you no longer became interim, should this no longer be interim? And until, and, until it's final, that's why we put that on there. So to get through the current year until things are final, that's why we put that on there. Okay. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote on this. Director Beck? Yes. Uh, Director Hayes? Yes. Director Potts? Yes. <clears throat> Director Snyder? Yes. Director Poshin? Yes. Director Klein Jerome? Yes. And my vote is yes. Motion carries. Uh, may I have a motion on approval of bills? Mr. President? Director Beck? I move that the board adopt the following resolution recommended by the administration for the adoption for adoption of the bills from the bill listing periods of 12121 to 2321 resolved all claims presented to the board having been duly certified as correct by the secretary reviewed by the administration and board members and they are hereby audited and allowed as just claims and warrants drawn for, on the treasury for the several amounts further resolved the payment of claims and salaries be approved as presented for the periods of January 21st, 2021 to February 3rd, 2021. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Director Hayes. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I will call for the vote. Director Beck? Yes. Director Hayes? Yes. Director Poshton? Yes. Director Snyder? Yes. Director Klein Jerome? Yes. Director Potts? Yes. And my vote is yes. Motion carries. Uh, cruising right along. Um, on to the superintendent report. Thank you. I wanted to give an update about the vaccinations that have been happening in this room. Um, we have set up five, five clinics over two weeks, and we've done this with Genesis, Genesis Occupational Health. We are utilizing our DCSD school nurses and so far, last, last week, we, vac we had 789 vaccination of Davenport Community School staff. And, th and that's all staff. I want to make that very clear to everybody. That's all staff. And moving forward, we have 964 more appointments set up. And I want to applaud our, our area health agencies for doing appointments because I think it is such a better, uh, such a smoother transition. And I will have to tell you, if you want a shot in the arm, literally, Come stand in here and feel the, the power and the vibe of that in the room. People are really um, energized and, and, and it's really helping a lot of morale in our district. This morning we found out that we had additional vaccinations because we had people that are hearing the results of it. You know, it's, it, it wasn't as bad as they were expecting. And 
And so the additional vaccinations covered everybody that was on the waiting list right now. And so I just wanted to give everybody an update that that is for all staff that we are, we are vaccinating. We will have an opportunity to vaccinate everybody that signed up. And I think that's a, a big tribute to those people that did the work setting that up in Genesis. Um, Gina Ekstrom and Bill Schneiden kind of led the way on setting that up. And so that was a really, a really positive note for our district. Um, I, second thing, and I said this earlier, Casey, you teed it up perfectly for me. Um, uh, we're hearing a lot of concern about the masks and the mask mandates. We're not backing away from our mask mandate. It's very important to our safety. So I want our community to hear and know that. Um, the last thing on the superintendent's report is on the line with us, we have Amy Williamson from the Department of Education, and she kind of wanted to speak to our board and our community for an overall update and next steps for the Davenport Community School District. So Amy, are you with us on the call? I am. I actually turned my camera on, but I'm not sure that you can see anything. Well, the floor is yours, Amy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. I was hoping to be able to um, kind of hear you all and see you too. So um, thanks for giving me a little bit of time on your agenda tonight. Um, Director Lebo had hoped to be here. She had a family emergency and was unable to join. Um, so she sends her regards. Um, she hopes to be at one of your next meetings. Um, so I actually just wanted to give you um, a report on sort of where we are since uh, the State Board of Education um, gave Director Lebo uh, the authority to oversee some of the operations within the district on their behalf. Um, we are sort of at the midpoint in um, the timeline that they had given before they revisit that decision to determine if it will continue. Um, that will be at their March meeting. Uh, and um, I do have, uh, I think, some, some news to provide. So um, one thing is uh, I think all of the board members and certainly all of us at the Department of Education um, really appreciated um, having uh, members of your board. So um, Director Gosa, um, Director Hayes came to the state board meeting this past month uh, and um, were able to, you know, answer a couple of questions and just represent your board. And I think that was um, very much appreciated. We really appreciate uh, having the opportunity to continue to um, sort of generate a, a collaborative um, relationship. And I know that I have spoken to you all before. Um, we've met uh, having one-on-one um, -on -one meetings sometimes when I've been in the district, um, but it's important that we continue to be able to, to talk. And um, with the pandemic, it's been difficult face-to-face. -face. And so I just wanted to express my appreciation. I know that Director Lebo would say the same thing um, had she been able to be here. Um, I also wanted to say that um, we're all very appreciative of the work that um, the AEA has been doing. So to um, Bill Decker and um, to Shane Williams, uh, we appreciate the collaboration with the AEA and the district. Um, and I know that the Iowa Association of School Boards has been working really hard with the district and with uh, the board members. And so we really appreciate that as well. So um, we think that uh, uh, on behalf of the department, we think that this has been um, a good last few months for Davenport in terms of getting uh, a lot of hard work done on the um, crisis response and violence prevention plan, but also on thinking about what it will take to get the district to move forward on all of the other corrective actions. So um, we keep saying crisis response and violence prevention is foundational um, to moving PBIS farther for the district. Um, but what is it going to take for the district to feel like um, they're in shape um, to 
carry out the rest of the corrective actions and and really move forward. And so um, that's where I want to spend the remainder of my time, and I won't take up too much more of your time. I wanted to give you some information on um, how we, um, and we as kind of the team between um, TJ, um, the, uh, Bill, and Shane, and I, and, and Director Lebo meeting, uh, we meet twice a week. Um, and how we have been thinking about um, sort of the structure of um, administration in the district and how that can be altered um, slightly to uh, really make a difference in successful implementation of what kids need in the district. Um, and then um, what you can expect in terms of being adequately informed about that process. Um, I know the board has had questions in the past about um, your involvement, your decision-making authority, and how you'll be involved um, since the state has um, some operational authority. So I wanted to make sure to address those things. Um, so uh, part of what came out of the phase two report for those of you who are on the board at that time um, was that we, uh, we who did the visit had some concerns about the organizational structure of the um, central office uh, being exactly what would make the district successful. Um, and so uh, as a team, again, that would be Bill, TJ, Shane, um, uh, myself, Director Lebo, uh, and then also working with others um, in each of our organizations, um, have determined that we think that um, with the big goals being having uh, operational efficiencies and having consistent aligned expectations across your district so that you can really improve student outcomes, um, that the structure of central office needs to change some. Um, so, uh, we have a, a um, new structure drafted up, uh, and um, we are going to first share that with board members, um, and um, then there will be kind of a timeline of how that will uh, be shared out to um, administrators, to staff members, um, but obviously we wanted to make sure that the board hears about it first. Um, and we also wanted you to have the opportunity to understand um, where, what your authority will be within that process as we're kind of getting through these next couple of months and into um, meeting with the state board. So um, first thing to know is that um, no one's going to be hired in an administrative position at um, Davenport schools without um, the local board. Um, sanctioning that. So you just had a discussion, for instance, about um, some uh, posts uh, for, and one of them was an administrator. Um, the, the state has some operational control, but the local board will always have the authority to make sure that you're approving hires. Um, it is our intention to ensure that um, if there are new positions in the structure, uh, that all of the uh, posting, interviewing is completely transparent and completely thorough. Um, and Bill Decker has been a big help in arranging um, uh, interviews, um, screening, and things like that uh, with experts across the state um, to sort of supplement um, the great HR department that you've really developed. Um, so that's one thing that I wanted to make clear is that the local board's not being cut out of any of this process. Um, and I think um, the next thing that I wanted to just really emphasize is that while um, this is being done at a time when I know the uh, state, uh, this, with the uh, State Board of Education, has taken some operational control of the district, the absolute goal of all of this is that Davenport comes out a much stronger district in that um, all of the all of the buildings 
are able to get the same message at the same time, the same resources, the same support, support, um, and that the path of improvement that you are all on is completely sustainable. Um, so that um, whether you ever hear from me again, or um, whether TJ sticks around, um, or the AEA has a complete change in personnel. Um, this is a sustainable um, sort of structure that you can all depend on. Um, so I'm gonna stop talking with that. And um, I think that, I don't know if TJ, Bill or Shane wanna talk about sort of next steps, but um, basically wanted to give you that information to start off with. Mr. Decker, will you please approach the podium? <laughs> you you can walk. You don't got to run. Yeah, I thought it was kind of like Price is Right. I needed to hurry up and get down Come here on and down. call my name. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you, Amy. And um, I will tell you that there's there have been a lot of conversations, a lot of time put into what the next steps are going to be. Uh, those steps are planned to be shared with the board tomorrow morning. So we're going to have some quick turnaround. TJ has, uh, I think, worked with Brenda to uh, put some appointments together. If tomorrow morning doesn't work for board members, we'll, we'll try to find the next available time that will work for you. Uh, then I believe it's Friday morning when we will get the cabinet together and we'll be talking to the cabinet about what the, uh, the model will be for the district. And then uh, next week, I believe TJ will be looking at making more public statements, both um, internally to uh, the, the teachers and principals and, and building personnel, as well as uh, to the community. So that, those, are the, those are the next planned steps. Um, I do think that uh, you are going to be able to see the things that Amy Williamson just spoke about, the alignment and the, the way that accountability will be much different in a, in a different model. And so we are, uh, I think I speak for that whole team from Director Lebo to Amy, to Shane, myself, and to TJ, we are looking forward and are anxious to get this process going because we are very confident it will be better for kids. And I think you will see that as well. So any, any other questions, I'm, I'll, I'll do my best with what I can today. Any board members have any questions? You must have rolled it out really good, Bill. Okay. Um, I would just, uh, first, I do appreciate, uh, Amy, you being on our uh, meeting tonight. I greatly appreciate that and uh, uh, collaborating with us on a lot of things. So, um, I mean, I'll, I'm intrigued to see what you guys came up with. Obviously, we've had some issues. I mean, ever since I've been on the board, I've kind of preached some of that stuff. So I'm just be happy to see where we're going because at the end of the day, we have to serve our students because they are our number one um, and then the community and that. So um, in whatever way I can be helpful, I'll be there. So no one has anything else? Thanks a lot. You can walk back now. <laughs> Did you have anything else on your superintendent report, TJ? Uh, thank you again, Amy, and you have a good rest of your night. Exactly. Committee reports. Are there any committee reports? You got a policy meeting coming up or anything? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Director Beck. Uh, the policy committee is going to meet on Wednesday to go through the second half of the 400 series policies. So we'll be bringing quite a few of those to you at our next regular meeting. Uh, Wednesday at 5, I believe. Okay. Finance committee, you got any updates or, or reports or anything? No, I don't. I don't think so. We'll be we'll be, be uh, meeting a week from Wednesday again oh, for our you. monthly meeting. What about LZAC? You guys got anything? Uh, got a hey, director Snyder. Did you report on that meeting? 
before? I didn't hear you. Did you report on that one LCAC meeting that we attended? No. no that actually was kind of a, an abbreviated meeting. Most of the people were not in attendance and we had talked about um, developing kind of like a, a mission or goal of the committee. Um, and that's about as far as we got. And then our next meeting upcoming, um, I believe is next week. I'd have to look at my schedule, but um, I think there's gonna be quite a few more people and uh, we'll get a little bit more done, so. Thank you. So when the agenda committee meeting started putting together agendas, we added this for committee reports to give everybody a chance to report back to the board on this stuff. Um, as far as legislative advocacy, this Friday at noon, we have a meeting right in this room with some of our uh, local legislators to talk to them. Um, I know uh, Superintendent Schneckloff and I have talked a lot about this. We're going to try to redo the legislative advocacy where we're reaching out to all of our local elected officials that cover the Davenport area. Um, I have talked to uh, Mike with TAG about helping us out with that as well so we can start reaching out to our and work together with all of our local elected so we're all on the same page for the same goal. Um, any other committee reports? Seeing none, I will move on to items requiring action. May I have a motion on item 10.01? Mr. President. Director Hayes. I move that the board approve the following resolution. Resolution setting public hearing to be adopted February 8, 2021, Brady Street widening, whereas Davenport Community School District is the owner of certain real estate located on Brady Street, known as Brady Street Stadium, whereas Davenport Community School District desires to sell a small parcel of the property to the Iowa Department of Transportation for the installation of turning lanes and widening, whereas Davenport Community School District is required to hold a public hearing on the proposed transfer pursuant to Iowa Code 297.22. Resolve all the public hearings shall be held in the Jim Hester Boardroom, Second Floor Achievement Service Center, 1702 North Main Street, Davenport, Iowa 52803 on February 22nd at 6 o'clock p.m. for the purpose of the sale of the real estate herein. Further resolve that the secretary shall publish a form of notice of public hearing and notice of sale of real estate to in the Quad City Times at at least once, not less than 10 days, but not more than 20 days prior to the date of the public hearing of the form attached hereto. Adopted on February 8, 2021. Thank you. Is there a second? <coughs> second. Seconded by Director Beck. Mr. Ermanski, you want to come on down? We'll let Josh kind of give a little brief summary on this and then I'll call for the vote as the discussion. I got to think of little pointing on the back and like everybody's like, who do you want? Good evening. Um, really, it's pretty simple. They want to change or move the south driveway a little further north <clears throat> to give a little better sight line coming across the bridge sounds like there must be some accident issues or some things taking place down there during games and such so really what they're doing is they're going to pay for all the changes and stuff needed they need easement access onto the property to do the job and that's really what they're doing um they're just going to turn the the driveway from going directly into the parking lot to a little bit more of an angle so people can kind of veer off into the parking lot rather than almost coming to a stop risk getting rear-ended things like that Does anybody have questions for Josh while he's up here? Director Beck. First of all, thank you for explaining that. <laughs> um, I appreciate it. And uh, just to clarify, this is not going to affect the size of the parking lot at all? No, there's three spots there where it turns directly in where they're going to be close. People could choose not to use them if they wanted to. But, you know, I think the reality is if it's really busy, every spot gets used everywhere. So, um that would be the most spots that would be affected. Okay, thank you. Director Klein, Jerome. Um, I see how it angles in. Will there be an angle out at that point or? I think the intent is to try to 
turn it a little bit in like that so people realize that the other one's the out. This one is more of the in. There's not two people trying to exit out of those spots at the same time. It sounds like it's an issue with when games are done or people trying to go out of the what's supposed to be the in lane. Okay, thank you. Anybody have anything else? Um, as a parent of a high schooler that attends many, many things at Brady Street Stadium, I think this was long overdue, so I do appreciate that. If only we could get more parking so then they don't have to cross the street. That would be great. But All right. <laughs> um, thank you very much, Josh. Thank you. Seeing no other discussion, I will call for the vote. Director Hayes? Yes. Director Beck? Yes. Director Snyder? Yes. Director Poshin? Yes. Director Potts? Yes. Director Klein Jerome? Yes. And my vote is yes. Motion carries. Uh, may I have a motion on item 10.02? Mr. President. Madam Vice President. I move the board approve the annual audit for the year in June 30th, 2020. Second. Seconded by Director Klein. Jerome, is there any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Director Hayes? Yes. Director Klein. Jerome? Yes. Director Potts? Yes. Director Snyder? Yes. Director Postin? Yes. Director Beck? Yes. My vote is yes. Motion carries. All right, may I have a motion on item 10.03? Mr. President. Who, who got it first? Me, 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 me. Director Potts, go ahead. I move the board approve the recommendations of the school district implement virtual learning days when school is canceled due to inclement weather for the remainder of the 2020-2021 school year. Uh, is there a second? Second. Seconded by Director Snyder. Is there any discussion? Director Beck. Um, I do want to ask about the concerns brought forth by Mr. Keeley tonight during open forum. Um, we went through the plan um, and we did hear from some teachers on, uh, on uh, Monday of last week, although they primarily talked about the 100% in person. I don't think they really weighed in on the, the virtual learning day. Um, I know I've had a lot of parents email me um, uh, expressing their desire to have virtual learning days, especially right now because uh, it keeps snowing and snowing and snowing again. Um, <laughs> so I, I do think it's important for us to implement something. Um, I would say uh, I think we need to be flexible. And um, if, uh, if, you know, teachers are are, have kids stuck at home, um, that we might think about how we can best accommodate everyone while still delivering at least some educational content to our students so that they're not losing another day. Um, I know the main worry is that they may be in school until next year um, at the rate we're going. So that was, that was it. Any other discussion? Um, I'm going to vote for this because it needs to be done, but I'm going to strongly suggest that you do include the other groups that are affected by this and you know I will check so please do so and that's all I'm gonna say on that um, is there any other discussion I will call for the vote director Potts yes director Snyder yes uh, director Hayes yes director Beck yes director Klein Jerome yes director Poston Yes. And my vote is yes. Motion carries. May I have a motion on item 10.04? Mr. President. Director Hayes. I move the board approve members of the negotiation team as presented. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Director Klein Jerome. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. Director Hayes. Yes. 
Director Klein Jerome. Yes. Director Potts. Yes. Director Poston. Yes. Director Snyder. Yes. Director Beck. Yes. My vote is yes. Motion carries. May I have a motion for item 10.05? Mr. President. Madam Vice President. I move the board approve the return to learn plan as presented. Second. Bam, bam. Is there any discussion? Director Poston. <clears throat> At one time, there was some discussion about uh, not her having early out on Wednesdays. Where did that end up at? Our calendar is set right now, um, but we can always go back and adjust our calendar. And, um, I can let Rob talk to this if you like, Rob. We can make those adjustments if we need. I think where we sit right now is the students' last days on a Wednesday. And I think that would be an awful lot of time to make up to make three days. So to do a high quality instruction, uh, I think would be very difficult to, and to still get everything that we need to be to done, get everything we need done and accomplished. We're going to need some Wednesdays. Wednesdays, Rob. Yeah, for us to finish up the week before with students, we need to capture 18 hours of school time. So whether that be 18 Wednesdays or um, adding 20 minutes or 25 minutes on the bell time for each day. We'd have to consider those things to be able to get back into that previous week. Would the 18 Wednesdays, wouldn't that be like starting now? I mean, in order Hey, hey hang on one second. Director Poshin wasn't finished and then I'll call no, him. Go, go ahead. Well, okay. I, I just, that would right. be now, I think. It, it would be if the, the desire of the board was to finish up in the week prior, we'd have to start looking at that tomorrow to be able to make those determinations about using Wednesdays or adding five minutes, 10 minutes onto the day. We just, from a, a recommendation was to move back to the schedule that we previously were on um, for parents that we were just going back to our regular bell schedule we've been using for the last few years. But yes, we can look and do it anything. Okay, well, I guess that's not what I was looking for. I, I'm not looking for making up days. I'm just trying to get the kids more classroom time. More belt, you want more than the 1080 hour bell time. Yes. Looking for additional time. Okay. Director Snyder. If they, uh, if we were to um, abandon our Wednesdays uh, early outs, how would that affect transportation? As you know, we're, we're also responsible for um, busing private schools. So, would that how would that affect all the, the busing scheduling? In the past, the parochial schools have followed our schedule. So if we had a snow day, if we have, if we changed our schedule, we'd have to be in communication with them immediately about that. Um, they've also um, made some adjustments and figured out things because our schedule didn't meet with theirs exactly. So it would be an impact. Okay. Uh, Superintendent Schneckla. I want to go back to your question, Director Poshin, because I think it gets at something that is weighing heavy on all of us. So how do you get students more time? And with the dollars that are associated, our, our SR2 dollars, our COVID dollars, one of the biggest things that we're looking at right now is how can we provide things that allow for more time? How do we provide out of school time, above and beyond school time, opportunities for our students. You know, the first thing that we're, we've got going right now is a summer school, um, a summer school that's getting going. So those kinds of opportunities are exactly what we're looking into planning right now as we speak. Director Beck, you had something? Yeah, um, I guess I've heard from uh, parents, both some say, don't extend the day. Some say do extend the day um, because they don't want to be in school. You know, they don't think their kids are going to get much out of those last three days of school. Um, it, you know, we're never going to make everybody happy. But I think what's important is um, that we make sure that we don't lose any more time um, due to weather or whatever. Um, 
I personally think that if we can gain back a day or two um, by not having an early out, that that might be something we should consider um, or extending the day by 10 minutes uh, because then, you know, um, rather than having a full day potentially lost, I mean, there is always that full day potentially lost at the end of the school year anyway, but it gets harder and harder the more you get into June. Um, and they're already gonna have a very short summer this year uh, because we started so late. Um, I guess anything we can do to sort of maximize the amount of time our students have to uh, gain, make up for any lost <clears throat> learning they may have experienced because of the situation that they're in, because maybe they didn't have access to good internet or a parent to help them or something like that. Um, and I know everybody in this district is really looking, you know, we all have the best, the student's best interest at heart. Um, but I guess I would say, think about potentially, um, you know, consult the teachers, consult the other staff, and look at potentially eliminating the early out uh, if that would help us uh, finish school um, at a reasonable time. So what I'm gonna do real quick, so there's no confusion at all, I'm gonna go around and ask each board member where you're at with extended Wednesdays so the staff knows what to look into. And then after I get your consensus on that, I'm gonna ask you about extending the day so that way they have a clear direction on where the board stands on this because I don't, you know, if you only hear from one board member. So I'm just gonna go right around the horn. Uh, Director Klein, Jerome, where would you be at? Um, I would like to see the early out Wednesdays be eliminated starting what is the high school second semester, March 1st. third, March 1st. third March 1st. fourth term, or March first? Oh, yeah, March first. Okay, Director Poshin. Like I stated before, I'd I'd like to see it also eliminated, but I'm not looking at trying to replace days at the end of the year. I just want more class time, and we we talk about the effects, the most effects that we have on our students, and to me that's getting them more class time after what we've gone through for over or about a year now. I think anything we can do to get more class time is gonna be beneficial to the students. Thank you. Director Beck. Um, I agree. I think we should consider, we should eliminate the Wednesday early out provided that teachers have been consulted before we make that decision. Um, and um, whether it means we get out of school early or not, I think it's important to think about extending that time. Okay, Director Hayes. I can agree with the elimination of the early outs because we have lost quite a few bit of hours, days in school, and I feel as much as it would hurt some that it's more beneficial to the students to have that extra time. Thank you, Director Snyder. I too am fine with uh, eliminating the Wednesday early outs. Director Potts? Have we scheduled any essential in-services and trainings that we need to ha have to take place that helps with citations we have from the state? So this needs to be carefully considered because if we're an entire day, you know, the last meeting that we had, you guys were talking about, well, the last day of school, the last day of school. Well, if you move the last day of school back, it's still the last day of school. Mm -hmm. But up until that point, you have entire days. Entire days is where you're most impactful. The second part is you hit the nail on the head. The Wednesdays, while we might be able to vi visit some of them, taking all of them would be, make it almost detrimental to implementing our CRVP plan. Shane, I see you kind of wanting to raise your hand. Is there any, is that okay? Yeah, come on. I was just trying to get you a consensus. No, this is good. I think that, but I think out. this is helpful for information purposes for the school board. So my intent was when you guys looked into that, you would come back with your, sure. so it gives you more time to look into Absolutely. it, but you knew where the board was at, but. Yeah, I, I definitely think you're considering the right option, options, which is placing the kids first. An unintended consequence of that is 
you essentially negate the, the possibility of being able to meet your corrective actions because we depend on that time in order to do training with teachers, just as Director Potts has, had alluded to. So we're probably going to have to go back and process. And just full disclosure, it may be impossible to get all the work done if you don't have those Wednesdays. I don't want to give you false optimism that you can get it all done and, and still not have those Wednesdays. It might be a, an impossible ask to be able to do that. Certainly something to take into consideration, but we want to operate with the full scope of the of the system's needs. So then I would defer the decision on that to the superintendent and the superintendent's team. Mm -hmm. Just to clarify one more time, you guys were kind of hammering Mr. Scott with some stuff here. So I was trying to get a clear consensus of where you're at. And now he knows, well, I want to look into Wednesdays and they can go back and then they can come back to us and say, look, we can only do this many Wednesdays with in services. This is kind of getting a little out of hand. I'm not saying we are not voting on this. We're giving them the direction on what you guys are looking for because sometimes one person's this way and another way. And so that way you guys have a clear direction. This is what the board wants. Look into it. If you can't do it, just come back and say you can't do it. Simple as that. That's all I was doing. I was trying to make this a lot easier. Um, did anybody have anything else on that? I, I'm not asking for a vote. It's not on the agenda just to get your guys' direction on it because sometimes I think we give our administration mixed signals on what we're looking for. So I'm trying to streamline that a little more and make it a little easier. Did anybody have anything else? Director Snyder. Were you going to ask about extending the days in general? I don't know if I want to. I'm kind of nervous on that. Yeah, I was, but I just wanted to make sure we were good on this part. Um, now I'm going to go from the other side. <laughs> Where would you be at with extending the days? We're giving them a couple different options to look at. Director Potts? I don't have any issue with extending the days so long as transportation can be handled. And it has doesn't have, it, it doesn't have, uh, we have to look at what impact it would have on extracurricular activities. Mm -hmm. And when teams have to leave to go places, because I know my own experience is that when we were ending on regular time, we had routinely teams had to leave and miss seventh period class to go for an away game because we were not on the same schedule with certain teams who were playing or the distance traveling was an issue. Director Snyder. Well, I'm a little hesitant to offer my opinion because you asked us our opinion on the early outs before we had all the information because I wasn't aware that we wouldn't be able to meet our citations if we did have the Wednesday outs. But as far as extending the days, I will say that I would have a very hard time believing um, teachers have a challenge enough keeping students engaged in the time that they're in the classroom and to add extra minutes at the end of the day I would have a very hard time believing those would be constructive um, minutes. And if they're not constructive minutes, they're just minutes. Director Hayes. I would tend to agree with Director Snyder. At the end of the day, young people's minds are gone. They're not paying attention anymore and extending the day. I'm out at this time of day. That's the time I technically check out. It's over. So I wouldn't be in favor of that. No, I think just give them more class. Okay. Direct, thank you. Director Beck? Um, well, yeah, if I, I don't know if I have enough information after hearing about the potential effect on citations that, you know, made me reconsider how I felt about uh, Wednesday early outs. But without any other information, um, I don't have a problem with it if, if it's what's best for students and teachers. Um, are comfortable with it because it doesn't matter if it's the last 10 minutes of the day at 2.30 or the last 10 minutes of the day at 2.40. Students know it's the last 10 minutes of the day. And so I feel like it's it's we might get an extra 10 minutes of engagement um, uh, if we extend it. But I'll defer to the superintendent and the rest of the team to make that decision. Thank you. Director Poshin. So maybe this was already said, but we're, we're talking about extending it by how much? 
I think mm -hmm. Rob, it's what would you say, 10, 20 minutes? So an example would be if we put 10 minutes on the beginning of the bell schedule, at the beginning of the day or at the end of the day, it'd have to be consistent. So if we had at the beginning, it would have to be K-12 beginning of the day or K-12 at the end of the day. That would capture approximately two school days, a little bit over 12 hours. So 10 minutes on the day from the rest of the year would capture two school days for us. That's just an example. Not to say that's the model. There's not even two minutes of class. So you're, you're trying to make up days at the end then by doing this? Then the, prof yes, professional development, you would still have the Wednesdays and then you'd also have additional in-service days for the teachers at the end of the year, maybe in planning for next year in return to, you know, some other options. <clears throat> Those are just options you're asking me. So that would be a way to do it. To still have Wednesdays and add some time into the day. Again, that's not direct question. You're asking about more days. I'm just giving options where you would capture the three days back so you'd be done the week before. You wouldn't get into that week of the June uh, 15th to the 19th or something like that. Okay, well, <clears throat> I'm not looking for cut days. Yes. Again, I'm just looking for more class time. So that's where I'm at. Director Klein, Jerome. Um, having been in the classroom, adding 10 minutes. Okay, if you're on a block schedule, that's two minutes a class. That's not worth it to mess up a whole bell schedule. Um, if you're on a five period day, you know, or a five period, again, two minutes. 10 minutes is not going to give students more, better class time. You also are cutting into the time that teachers need in order to prepare because they're before and after school time when they're not in meetings. It's their time to grade papers, grade tests, prepare, fill out report cards, you name it. So I am not in favor of adding 10 minutes. Okay, thank you. Is there, are you pretty clear on what the direction the board was giving you? Crystal. Perfect. <laughs> How do you like that? All right, so let's get back to the original motion by Director Potts on the approval of the return to learn plan. Is there any more discussion on that? All right. Uh, and Director Hayes, you s or no, you made the motion and Director uh, Potts seconded it. Yeah. Uh, I'll call for the vote. Director Hayes. Yes. Director Potts. Yes. Director Klein Jerome. Yes. Director Beck. Yes. Director Postion. Yes. Director Snyder. Yes. And my vote is yes. Motion carries. That was probably the longest one we've done. All right, can I get a motion on item 10.06? Mr. President. Director Postion. I move the board approve the superintendent's contract as presented. Is there a second? Second. Second by Director Hayes. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. Director Postion. Yes. Director Hayes. Yes. Director Klein Jerome. Yes. Director Potts. Yes. Director Beck. Yes. Director Snyder. Yes. And my vote is yes. Motion carries. Uh, may I have a motion on item 10.07? Mr. President. Director Snyder. I move that the board approve the temporary appointment of Brenda T to serve as board secretary effective March 1st, 2021. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Director Beck. Is there any discussion? Um, the only thing I wanted to add to this, we're on a hiring freeze. We've asked everybody else to make concessions. We're kind of merging the superintendent, secretary, and the board secretary for the time being to show it happens right at the top for everybody. Um, is there any other discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Director Snyder. Yes. Director Beck. Yes. Director Potts. Yes. Director Klein Jerome. Yes. Director Hayes. Yes. Director Postion. Yes. And my vote is yes. Motion carries. May I, or we're on discussion items now. Um, 
citation update. I will turn it over to you, Mr. Yes, I have um, Jake and Corey here today to give us an update on crisis response violence prevention. And you guys can sit up here if you like. Um, Thank you. Um, just an update, I think you have a, the document that kind of walks through this in front of you right now. Um, but at our last, uh, at the last board update about this, we were just about to um, proceed with our kind of like our, our tier one level of training in crisis response and violence prevention, which we have, uh, have done for all of our building teams. And they're in the process now of taking that training back to their building. So far we have had, um, We've had, I think it is 1,500 people took a pre-learning survey on how to respond, um, how to respond with verbal de-escalation skills, um, with using physical proximity, um, and just having an understanding of what your role is for all staff in every building um, in our district. And now the task for our building teams is taking that back and training all of their staff on it. So as up to this point, um, there have been, uh, based on the pre-learning and post-learning surveys that we have, about 500 of our staff who have completed that. And they have up until spring break um, and um, using their Wednesday time to actually present this back to their staff. And so that's where that Wednesday piece kind of was an, a, an important component in there as far as that training plan. So we have that layered out for all staff. And actually, the next layer of training, which is for our building crisis teams, which is a collection of specific roles and responsibilities at each building who are getting that next level of training on, on what, what that team, in, which in, includes an administrator, uh, special education represent, representatives, a custodian, a food service rep, uh, security, um, nursing, um, all of those groups there so that when a bigger piece might happen in a building, um, that, that team will be trained in the physical response if that, if that is necessary. Um, and in addition to how to debrief after that to making sure that we're taking care of the uh, emotional wellness of all the students and the staff. And actually tomorrow is when we are presenting that training to our building crisis teams. Um, and, and I'm really excited about that. Um, because we're having people at the table that often aren't at the table. And again, in addition to our security, we're having, like I, I talked about, our nurse and health paras. Uh, we're having a head custodian there. We're having our SROs in, involved in that, in that training also so that we um, really are broadening that, that scope. And, um, and so that will be a very specific training that, uh, that we're rolling out tomorrow. And, uh, and then moving forward into the future, we have our youth leadership teams that it's going to be kind of like step three is, um, as, as I know that you all, and I've heard that even tonight, having voice for, um, for our, our students as well um, in, in a part of these conversations and how we can make sure that all students feel safe, engaged, and connected in our schools. Um, so that is a little bit there. Corey, is there any piece you want to add to that? So the professional development that we've um we're um, rolling out to all staff is in conjunction with the AEA. Our AEA partners have been amazing working with the Department of Ed on what is it need, what needs to happen as a system to ensure that students are feel safe psychologically and physically safe in the building. And so we've had excellent response each time that we do the professional development. It goes to our district student achievement team, which is comprised of all of our principals and teachers, and we get feedback from them. And then as we've been rolling out, this will be our second large training. We've had great feedback about the, um, the way we're looking at this as a system so that everyone, no matter what school you're at, has the team that's operating in, in order to make all of our students safe. So it really has been very interactive training. We also bring this training, parts of it, back to our community um, just our community crisis response and violence prevention team so that we can actualize those deliverables which are to ensure that our community is also engaged in this process and that we are accessing mental health resources that we have in our community and we're able to ensure that that communication is going down to our buildings as well. Uh, I, I guess 
one last piece since I know um, you you want to know about the impact and the data and how that what how do we know what we're doing is making a difference so from our pre-learning survey all staff in our district I kind of referenced this um, took a survey on how we are how what they feel they should be doing how should they respond to these different situations and um, when they first did that, again, those 1,499 people did that, and our, the average score was an 83.5%, which is actually pretty good. Um, but after the training, for those that have completed it, that, that number is now 95%, understanding what those pieces are. So um, in addition to what Corey had mentioned about the, the feedback on the surveys that are people saying it's very positive, they're very glad to hear what their expectations are, we have some pretty good hard quantitative data also that um, it's not just about feeling like they know what to do. We can see it in the numbers that we're, we're providing for them. Uh, do any board members have questions? Uh, Director Poshton. So some of the people that are doing the training, what kind of experience have they had as far as actually confronting um, students and going through an actual crisis how many of them have actually had experience at that well so we have our district crisis response and balance prevention team which includes um, individuals from um, from curriculum from learning supports from special education um, and uh, some teaching staff within uh, that's on that team and we're working closely with our AEA um, who is providing with support from the Department of Education. Um, so as far as like the training tomorrow, um, from, from the district side of things, Corey and I are the, are the presenters from the district side, and we have a couple AEA staff who are presenting also. So my experience with it is just as a building principal, as a teacher, principal, and administrator in our district, um, and Corey would be the same. Um, so that's where the experiences that I personally have come to the table on that. Can you clarify your question? Are you asking about the, the, the crisis, the building crisis response team? And or are you asking about the people that are creating the presentation and their experiences with dealing with crisis? I'm talking about the people that are being trained in the, the people doing the training in the buildings. Okay. So the, so the people that are doing the training in the building, the building crisis team, I mean, just like Jake said, it's your administrators, your counselors, it's all of those essential people. And if you've worked in a school, you know, unfortunately, we've all dealt with issues of crisis. And this is ensuring that all of those people know exactly how to respond so that we have that system-wide approach, that systemic approach to ensure that they're, all people feel safe, including the teachers, including the staff. Did you have more, Director Poshin? Oh, I thought you were reaching for your button. I guess you guys knocked it out of the park. Or it's just really I kept my questions in front of me that I know you guys like to ask, so I was ready to go. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Mine are right here. <laughs> and you, Harry's on the screen now, and you can see him snickering about it because it's working out. <laughs> uh, Director Beck. Actually, yeah, um, I missed the beginning, sorry. <laughs> um, so I didn't wanna ask a question that had already been answered, but um, I, I sort of echo what Director Poston said. I think um, it's, it's important for the people who are doing the training to actually know what these experiences are like, right? Because otherwise, you know, they don't really understand what it's like in the moment. So mm -hmm. I appreciate that the people doing the training are the ones uh, have also been in these situations at some point, um, because I think that is important. Um, and I guess, is there, as part of this training, do, is there reflection from the teachers and other staff on, well, you know, I experienced this situation this other time, and this is how I responded and it worked. Um, I'm not sure what you're suggesting is necessarily the right approach or so is there a chance for that type of feedback um, from people who've been more recently in the trenches so to speak yeah yeah so 
we, so there's two different trainings we're talking about. We have the one that we are in the midst of rolling out now and then the one that is for tomorrow. Right. But I can tell you in the buildings, um, because with the training that's being rolled out now, each member of the district crisis response team is actually co-presenting with a group of buildings. So we're, we're actually helping to roll this out um, in each building as well. So well, it, the buildings that I have been a part of, there is, a, there is first off a lot of reflection time with the team. So allowing them to have conversations on, well, here's what, here's what uh, the framework is. How is that applied to you? What's different between what you may have done to what we're saying? Um, and there's a time in the midst of that where they have a, an FAQ like survey that like any question that you have coming up that might um, uh, conflict or you have some thoughts about, go ahead and put it in this survey and the district team will review that. And I was um, using that actually during the presentations where I would keep my screen up watching the, those questions come in live and would be able to respond to some of those things um, as they were being inputted in there. So we want to take into there um, the, the nuance of situations um, the, that, you know, in these crises types of situations that it's not as clear cut as always just if this then this yeah. um, but we're trying with this first level is the tier one level of what we want in a in a big system like Davenport all teachers to know understand and be able to do so that there's consistency and allowing for equity in all buildings with all students okay. Go ahead. so Jake always finishes my thoughts, so good job, Jake. But definitely, we are, there's a lot of um, reflection um, built in through scenarios, through reflecting on your personal experiences. But the professional development has been, I mean, it is all evidence-based. So it's based on the National Association of School Psychologists, prepa the PREPARE model, CPI de-escalation strategies. And we're really taking, and our partners with the AEA and the Department of Ed is, have led us to have the best materials of what works in our schools. But with that, adult learners, you need to reflect on your personal experience. So there's a balance of that. Here's the evidence. Here's what we want to see as a system. But also, let's take, in to take time, pause, to reflect on our own experiences and the nuances in a situation, which can be different from day to day. So we definitely do. The, it's a balance of both of those. Okay. Yeah. Director Poston. Are the SROs being involved in this? Yep, actually, that, we're excited that tomorrow they will be joining us as well, including um, Sergeant Quick and uh, Lieutenant Smith from our police department. Um, so, yep, we're trying to bring in all those groups. Any other discussion or question? Well, thank you for uh, answering all of our questions. It, it's a little easier when you know how all the answers to the test, right? <laughs> but no, we appreciate it. Um, I do agree with Director Posh and in fact, um, if you're going to talk about it, you need to be about it and um, have those experience. I, I wholeheartedly believe that. And if you go, you know, if you go to a different building, it might be a different, you know, culture and climate in that building. So um, I greatly appreciate your guys' work on this as well as the teams rolling this stuff out. So. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now we will move on to the next discussion item, which I will have turn it over to Harry and Lou Ann with the IASB. You know, good evening. Thank you. Uh, is the volume okay? Yes. Sir. President Gosa? Yes. Great. Sir. Thank you. A, a fast backdrop, and then we'll invite. Uh, President Gosa or Superintendent Schneckcloth or Luann to jump in. So here's the here's the quick backdrop. Um, one of the things that in in our periodic uh, planning meetings and debrief and looking ahead for uh, board growth and board development, one of the things that we talked about recently is to to revisit the superintendent board goals. And here's our thinking moving forward. And the operative word here phrase is thinking. On, at the long-term view, so translation, um, putting structures in place for effective long-term leadership of the board and superintendent, uh, continuous improvement. And the idea that, uh, you, which we, we applaud, Luann and I do, IASB does, we applaud, encourage, and appreciate your board's view and your superintendent's view on, we need to be looking 
the, the citations are what they are, and clearly they're a focal point right now. But we're but we're wanting to focus on over the long haul, what's going to help you as a board superintendent team continue moving forward to best meet the needs of kids, staff, and the community. And so a new element you'll see, the, the items in red are where we did some reworking or updating. Luann and I uh, encourage you as a whole board, and we shared this with Superintendent Gosa and I mean, su <laughs> Board President Gosa and Superintendent Schneckloth, roll mix up here, last week, this, this idea of thinking about these goals as probably at a minimum 18 month goals and probably areas of that even longer. And the new chunk that's that we've added in, in addition to some word adjusting, is you'll see such as under area one, area two, you see a short term goal. And this is based on the strategy, you know, how do you eat a big meal one bite at a time? So the idea here is while the larger goal is the opening line, the intent of the short term goal is to, to amplify or shine the spotlight on what what are the what is the superintendent and you as a board what are you uh, leaning into more heavily in the coming months and that those short term pieces could continue to be updated and we already know that the measures the indicators of progress the indicators of success that that's a step that has to be cleaned up but we think the idea of focusing and clarifying the short term push aligned to the longer term goal makes sense in moving forward. And I would ask uh, Luann or uh, President Gosa or Superintendent Schneckcloth, any, any other comments you, you folks would add about the way we were thinking as we approach this. And this is just first, first draft for you to discuss and start to react to tonight. Um, Dan, TJ, Luann? Uh, Harry, I'll chime in. Um, <clears throat> When we were doing this, what we had kind of uh, thought about doing was having a dashboard so that uh, when we wanted an update on where the superintendent was at with these goals, it would kind of be like the citation report. We would see here's where he is at, this is what he's working on, or you know, this is the team he's put together to help with these things and these are the things in place. And from there, we could establish as a board what um, the, uh, like Harry said, indicators are and that we think progress is being made or not being made so that we're kind of monitoring it a little more live stream. So if issues arise, you can kind of uh, figure out where the problem is and get it corrected sooner than later. Um, did you have anything yeah. to... All right, Harry, I gave you my two cents. All right, thank you. Luann, anything else you want to add, please? Um, thank you. Can you hear me okay, Harry? Yes. Um, no, just that, just to reiterate uh, that, Dan, I think in, in our meeting last week, you, you said it so well that you really wanted to set TJ up for success. And so the short-term goal really helps to narrow the focus and gives the board and the superintendent team clarity on what, as Harry said, that short-term um, uh, work is. So everyone's clear and on the same page as you're working towards the longer-term goal, which tend to be more open-ended and vague for a good reason. And so again, this, this short-term piece on this first one, uh, focus heavily on that ac accountability piece toward full implementation of your plan for, for all the areas below, citations and, and others. And that second one, an example would be, um, and, and Luann and I watch you as a board team and a superintendent chip away at this, that you have made great strides. You're not arrived, you have not arrived yet, but you have made good headway in the communication between the committees uh, the cycle or routine that you're getting in place now where where you're on big items, you're learning about discussing, unpacking those one time or maybe more than one meeting well before you get to a point where you're asked to vote and make a decision. Uh, 
That third one would be an example of continuing to, to um, try to get the most out of your finance committee and that balance between the committee recognizing and the whole board that the committee is serving the whole board and not the other way around. And how do you do that in a way where Karen and Kent are, are comfortable and pretty secure in the, the learning and conversations they're having at the finance committee along with Superintendent Schneckloth and others, that that is representing the will of the, the board as a whole. Uh, that fourth one, uh, that's probably the one uh, needing that will come up next to lean into that, uh, that disproportionality and as the Mississippi Ben Shane and, and Bill have commented and TJ has, Superintendent Schneckloth, that idea that, again, how do, you, how do you eat a big meal one bite at a time? This is on the horizon. So the notion of a, a task force to begin to identify a, a, those barriers that will, will allow you as a di district to, to move forward on that area. But everything isn't happening all at once. That fifth area, um, that the that the, that the focus on student achievement, and I remember a couple meetings back, uh, multiple board members talked about, what about kids? When do we get to the green boxes and the citations that align with what's happening to kids? Clearly that is on your board leadership's mind. It's on Superintendent Schneckloth's mind about, and so the, the shorter term step there would be, as you continue as a board to use those questions, those eight questions, that Superintendent Schneckloth, it will work with board leadership and you as a whole board team to identify what are those areas that fall under student achievement that will come to you as regular ongoing reports and to narrow the scope of that. And then on, the, on page two, please, Joe, that sixth goal, again, you heard another snippet of that tonight, the ongoing uh, focus on crisis response, violence prevention, Corey, and Jake, nothing makes me happier as an outsider consulting the board and, and Luann as well to know that as administrators you have those questions in hand because though the board has already declared those are important things to them and as it should be. So, Super, Superintendent Schneckloth, would you add, what else would you add about these short-term goals? And I'm going to be quiet. Well, we, when reviewing this document, this was something that these are your guys' goals for the district, which become my charge. And so when we reviewed these, we wanted to stay with the intent of each one of those goals, but to add a short-term piece. And so that's where these were. These came from the one that the goals that you established in the beginning of the year. So we felt that those goals were still really important and really relevant, and we just tweaked them for the current team and setup that we're in. And I fully support the goals that are sitting on here. I think they're lofty, but I think that's what we need to move towards. So, to, uh, President Gosa, however you need to get, uh, facilitate the discussion, uh, and I would just ask comments, reactions, questions, please. I'm not seeing anybody with their hands up, Harry, so I'll just go around the room and, oh, okay. direct the pots. Yeah, I, uh, I like this idea of these short-term goals because then it gives, it gives both us and the superintendent a chance to monitor their progress so that we don't, let's say, wind up at the end of a cycle and there's been no feedback, no indication that anything's occurred or, or whatever. Uh, this is, you know, this is... Uh, it's a good touchstone to have in there that that keeps the focus on the goal and then also provides the opportunity for the superintendent to remind us that look this is what i'm doing see this yeah we haven't got full accreditation but this is where we are now and i think that's very important director back yeah i would actually echo what director potts just said um you know even though we can update these each year, um, we still want to see progress on the, in the interim, right? And even though we are, you know, have planned to uh, 
formally discuss these twice a year with the superintendent, um, it's important, I think, for us to, to break it down even further and make sure for, for us to be doing our job properly to make sure that progress is being made even more regularly than just twice a year. So I think that's, I really appreciate the short-term goals in there. Director Snyder. Whenever I set goals for my staff, uh, my day job, we always use what we call the SMART goals. Um, and SMART standing for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timed. Um, the one thing I don't see in here is the timed. Um, it's kind of left as, well, well, we'll review them. I mean, we're going to get updates, but from a timed standpoint, I think we should, especially on the short-term goals, have some kind of a time frame set up from the beginning that we would like to see these finished or not really finished, but achieved. Is that all you have? Mm -hmm. um, Director Hayes. I like the, um, the way it's set up here. And as was said earlier, it allows Superintendent Snackloff that um, we're not setting you up for failure. It's clear to everyone what's expected. The collaboration is great. It will be on a continuous basis. We're not waiting for just evaluation time to discuss this. This is something that will certainly streamline evaluation because we've discussed it all along rather than just waiting to, on those periods. And I think it's helpful for all of us actually. Uh, Director Beck. Um, I actually um, uh, also want to sort of uh, echo what Director Snyder just said about a time time being in there. Um, you know, I guess it could be just something as simple as uh, each month we will have made X amount of progress, or it could be something like we will get a report you know, each month on this specific topic. Um, that way it sort of, it puts a deadline in there. Um, so I can appreciate that. And if, if it's possible, it might be worth trying to implement. Oh, Director Snyder. I guess uh, what I do with my, I don't, it's not even relevant to say, you know, by March 1st, I want, this entire goal done it's how long is it going to take you to finish this step yep. to get to the next step or what do you anticipate it's, it's a step thing mm -hmm. so by no means would i say you know we we want to know uh can you be done with goal six completely by march 20th it's not even feasible so um it's a it's just a, a step process so along the lines of what you're talking about with time, what we were kind of talking about was trying to get it into, again, like how the citation is, boom, here, and this is what you've worked on for these days or whatever. So if we did something like that and that were to work out, like what would the, would you want to review that at, you know, one regular meeting every month or every other month and then we kind of see the progress as it's going because um, that was kind of how we we're trying to figure on gauging the progress right mm -hmm. because if you actually look at it um, and it's right there in front of you you can see if you're making progress here and not so much here well then you need to focus more here so that was kind of the process we were thinking but when you bring up time so um, if that process would be a good process to do or we try it out to see how it works with like a dashboard when would we as the board want like updates on the status of that like at every board meeting at like every other board you know what i mean at every other month once a month or what what would you guys 
could um could, could I throw in a suggestion, Super yes, or Board President Gosa? Um, one of the things that we might do, and, and then it would be easy for the board to react and say, "Yeah, that's too long," or "That makes sense." I, I'd suggest that um, that Superintendent Snetcloth would be given a little bit of time to kind of think this through as you're talking. Luann and I will be glad to help support and can work with board leadership and maybe bring back a proposal for what would seem like a, a feasible kind of periods of time every other month, every month, every three months, whatever. Not so far along that you, you don't have a good sense of what's happening, but it would encourage you to, if you're open to that, that that he would be able to bring back some sort of game plan to you about frequency and then you'll be able to react to, yeah, that sounds reasonable or no, that's too long. Something like that. Thoughts? Thank you, Harry. Um, sure. How is everyone with Harry's proposal? I'm hearing a lot of loose parts rattling around, Harry. <laughs> okay. Well, it, that, that would really help speak to b between your comments, Dan, about the, the dashboard kind of idea and, and the notion of smart goals and, and Jamie and Allison very much appreciate your everything isn't March 8th or April 4th but the notion of you can start look your superintendent can start looking at chunks of time and say kind of here's where I think we'd be in three months or four months or two months that that would be a little bit of a reality based kind of time frame so it's not just wide open but everything isn't set to a date I, I think we can accomplish that and I'd be curious if superintendent Schneckloth think that's a doable thing yes I think um, sitting down and reviewing some of those goals I, I like the idea of utilizing the for back of lack of better term the Gantt chart that we use to show um, our citation update because in there that is broken down into develop implement you know and I really think that our board is used to seeing that so if that's if that's a tool and that's something that uh, Dan and I talked about um, over the weekend about utilizing that tool, and that would put timelines to it. And so sitting down and, and putting some of that stuff out, I think, would be beneficial. We'll be glad to help you in whatever we, we can as you put that together. Uh, Director Potts, you had something? Yeah, I, I, I appreciate that we have the need for constant information but i'm hoping that we are aware of the fact that we don't want to constipate the superintendent's time to the point where he is spending so much time preparing to give us reports about what he's done that he doesn't have enough time to do it right <laughs> because sometimes we look out oh, we want a monthly with this we want to every, every every board meeting we want this and every board meeting we want this and every board meeting we want this by the time we're finished with listing all the things you want every board meeting from everybody everybody doesn't have as much time to do the stuff that they're supposed to report on us what they're doing everybody time is an issue for everyone thank you um director Poshin and Klein Jerome do you guys have anything you want to add you've been kind of quiet on that end of the room I'm good you seem out of you not wearing your central mask tonight. I, <clears throat> I would just say, I mean, we just have to keep hammering away. I agree with Bruce that we don't want to make a bunch of busy work for the superintendent. But, you know, this is going to be information that we need to have in order to make informed decisions. Um, so I, I think it's incumbent on the board to just look at these goals every month or look at these goals before you come to a meeting and then have those in the back of your mind okay you know the whatever we're addressing for that particular meeting that particular agenda you know how does that pertain to our goals so that the worst thing that can happen is that you know we put these goals on a piece of paper and then we ignore them for a few months and so we just we just need to you know keep after it I'll turn it back over to you Harry I uh, appreciate the, the the views and the common sense here it's trying to find that 
sweet spot between, uh, as a couple of you said, where your superintendent's spending more time preparing the reports than doing the work, balancing that, but also with the measurable piece. And I really think that that was why I suggested that if uh, Superintendent Schneckloff has a little bit of time to think through what's realistic, and it wouldn't surprise me at all if it's, I love your idea, uh, Director Postian, about if the board just keeps those goals in the back of your mind, that's a great lens or a frame for every meeting. But, but then the reality might be that Superintendent Schneckloth is coming to you every couple of months with an update. Every And, and that could certainly be adequate. Um, let, let him have a chance to tinker with it. We'll provide some support, bring that back to you, and you'll be able to say, sounds good to us, and that doesn't have to be that often, or it's too much. And I, and, and I think you'll, be, you'll end up in a good spot. So I, I'm good. I'm, I'm finished with this piece here. Anything else, President Gosa, that you, you would want to share? Or it'll, it'll come back to you then. You have anything else? Um, I'm good. I appreciate you and Luann uh, giving up some of your uh, Monday night to uh, help us out here and facilitate this. Hey, you're some of our favorite people to hang out with on Monday nights. We're good. <laughs> Get a life, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. Thank you. Again, a final thought here is just music to my ears to hear Jake and, and Corey saying we've got the questions in front of us because you've worked enough on those as a board team to identify the critical things that are important. And what a win when staff is coming to you uh, all, already prepared to speak to those kind of areas. So thank you. Thank you, Harry and Luann. All right. Um, board requests. Are there any board requests? Holy cow. Thank you. Three board requests. Just a reminder, when uh, we had that virtual meeting, did everybody get their board requests in the Mary? If you didn't, make sure you did or do. All right, the first board request is from Director Snyder, dated today, a request for information. Uh, what percentage of staff has signed up for vaccination? Specifically, what percentage of staff at attendance centers are we surveying those that choose not to be vaccinated to determine them concerns? And then why are you making this request? Vaccinations are most effective when everyone is vaccinated. When would you like this after this process has concluded? Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Director Hayes. Um, Next board request by Director Beck dated today, an agenda item. I would like to have a presentation on the switch to standard-based grading and how standard-based grading works. Why are you making this request? While we do get a presentation on this a few years ago, why we did get a presentation on this a few years ago, I think that there are a lot of parents who are concerned about how this works, especially at the high school level. And when would you like this as soon as possible? Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Director Hayes. Uh, next board request by Director Beck, an agenda item. I would like the board to vote on the resolution in opposition of vouchers presented this evening. Why are you making this request? We are a locally elected school board and we are entrusted with students' education, we need to advocate for excellent public education for all students and advocate against measures that would prevent us from making quality education available to all students. Second. And she wants it ASAP, thank you. <laughs> Seconded by um, Director Poshin. Could you send it to us? And that is it for no more board reports or board requests. Okay. All right, administrative reports. 
And I did not forget this tonight because I made myself a note. The part on board reflection and what your takeaways from tonight's meeting are. Director Snyder. I'll start. Um, just as an example with our discussion earlier on early outs on Wednesdays, um, things aren't always as simple as they seem from the outset. There's always a lot of factors that uh, factor in. Um, so going back to when uh, we were asked, you know, if we support early outs on Wednesdays, if that would mean that we can't achieve a citation, um, getting that completed, then I certainly would never support anything that takes us away from achieving our citations. Um, so the second thing is um, on our virtual days, I, uh, I think it's important that uh, what Director Gosa said that it's very important that we get something put in place so that we're not uh, just wasting days sitting at home doing nothing when we are already extending our school year. But if something needs to be tweaked, and I'm sure it will, um, I have faith that the administration will work with the people that need to be worked with and get it so that it uh, is a process that works smoothly. Thank you. Oh, Superintendent Snackoff, go right ahead. Well, I just want to um, follow up with that because that was going to be my reflection if asked is that <clears throat> it's very, we have a great relationship with our union and I'm glad that they spoke up and that oversight comes at my level. And so I will go back and make sure that we have those conversations with our people because that in, in this, as fast as things are coming at us and as fast as we have to make decisions, sometimes that happens and that's my responsibility and I'll make sure that that happens. I'll make sure those conversations happen. So, it, you know, John cares deeply about and our, our union members care deeply about their, their members. And so we will go back and absolutely do that. If, if so, that's my reflection. Director Klein, Jerome. Um, I guess my reflection is uh, I like the fact that we are being very proactive. We're looking to the future. We're getting things done. Um, we hired a CFO. We've um, dealt with the superintendent goals, things that in the past um, we didn't seem to be moving quite as fast. You know, we're moving towards the citation. So, um, gives me hope that one day we won't have to even talk about these citations anymore because I'm kind of like to focus on something else. But I do feel that we are heading in the right direction and doing what we need to be doing. Thank you. Director Hayes. Everything, everything that's been previously said and also um, the negotiation teams, I think the information that we discussed, you know, regarding the negotiations prior to and now was very helpful to the two members that will be on that team. And I like the transparency associated with that because I think that's going to be very vital in the future using the forecast five so we can make decisions that really affect everyone. Thank you. Oh, Director Potts reaching for the button. I'll call on him. Oh, Director Potts, we'll go the other way. <laughs> My takeaway on this particular meeting was the presentation of the Have Life because it was a positive, upbeat thing, and it shows us that there are entire organizations in our own community working with us to provide opportunities for kids. And, and we need to, we need to, here I said this before, we need to focus on that. We need to focus, we spend a lot of time talking about the, the, our troubles. Okay? But it's our non-troubles that make this district what it is. Uh, so I think that was nice, positive, upbeat, uh, over a million two money raised to help kids do stuff. And it was an excellent video. I thought it was wonderful. <laughs> 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 I've seen a guy look familiar in there. Director Poshin. Well, <clears throat> that was the same thing I was going to bring up. But, uh, you know, it, it's so important to have um, 
community organizations like this, it, it, you know, it benefits the school district, it benefits the community. And so it's just a win-win situation. So we, we need to have more, you know, community involvement uh, with the school district. And uh, I think um, uh, it'll, be, it'll be very positive. Uh, the other thing I think was important tonight too is our discussion on, on the goals. And uh, if we follow those goals or attain uh, those goals, I think uh, we'll be on the right track. Thank you. Director Beck. Um, yeah, so I guess two things. One, um, along the lines of the Have Life presentation, it was really refreshing to have a positive presentation at the beginning of a meeting again. Um, it's been a little bit since we've been able to do that. And so I really appreciated that. Um, and they're an amazing organization. I didn't know what they did beforehand. Um, I'd heard of it, but uh, I really appreciate the work that's being done there. Um, and the other thing I kind of noticed is that um, I feel like when we're getting presentations, for example, the one from um, uh, on crisis response and violence prevention, uh, it's nice to know that the presentations were not being presented with information that is completely out of context or um, out of the blue to us. We know sort of the bigger picture. Um, we're all on the same page there. And that the administration and the, as, is willing to listen. Um, a good example was our discussion on uh, uh, return to learn, right? And we were able to voice uh, opinions and ask that certain groups be consulted before decisions are made and and people are willing to do that. And so I think that's really important and it goes a long way towards building very collaborative relationships throughout the district. Um, I, I will agree that I thought the have life thing was very upbeat. It was kind of nice to have something like that. It kind of makes me miss all the student showcases and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I was a little leery on one of those fellows they had on that presentation, yeah. <laughs> but you know, I, I thought it was a good thing. It's nice to have that upbeat stuff because I mean, all we talk about is citations and finances all the time, which are very important, but it is nice to tie things in like that, especially good things that are going on in our community and partnerships that are helping the district out and stuff like that. Um, also, I, uh, I do, uh, I do enjoy our board meetings. Board members get more engaged. Um, I do appreciate, you know, seeing Mr. Scott's eyes over there kind of widen when we're asking questions. So I know that we need to get clarification for that. So I think that's something um, I will try to be better at and kind of gauging when uh, um, we're having discussions like that, just so we can get a common consensus. So we're not throwing too much at them. And then, I mean, right in a matter of minutes we got that answered why it'd be hard to you know add wednesdays which a lot of people don't hear that stuff but they email and call and everything else so it is kind of nice to get that stuff out there and it's a good possibility you know to look into that and then you kind of know where the board's at with that so um i do uh surprisingly look forward to these meetings with all of you because uh it's they've been a lot better i think and productive and uh I do like that Director Beck's got her mask on upside down. <laughs> Whatever. But, uh, <laughs> what? Nobody told me until now. <laughs> I just, I, you're on that side. That, that's on, that's your partners over there. They left you hanging. Can't see the shoulder. <laughs> but uh, I didn't even notice. We can get things done and have a little bit of lighthearted fun here too, so it makes the meetings go by a little bit better. Uh, Again, I will uh, chime on the ISB. Make sure you check their websites out. They do have a lot of webinars and stuff like that. Um, and again, thank you everybody for all your work on the committees you're on. We greatly appreciate it. And with that, can I get a motion to adjourn? So move. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. You know what, I was just thinking, I checked to make sure it was on right side up when I got out of the car, but I...